Hello and welcome back again to the Way to Native Chronicles. In this episode, we're going to cover something that I hope is uh, of assistance to a lot of shooters. You know, on this uh, channel, we cover a pretty broad range of, of subjects from reloading to hunting, uh, uh, trapping, and shooting. A lot of different aspects to the shooting sports and the outdoor sports. Uh, there's so much to cover, but what I really like to do is focus on things that uh, when I look around to see what's available in terms of helping people, focus on things that, that can really help you in, in achieving your goals. And when it comes to uh, shooting handguns, you know, you can, you can work with making all your, your bullets, uh, casting bullets, reloading, uh, tweaking with your guns, um, you know, how to clean them, you know, how to hunt, all these types of things, there's so many things to cover, but if, you, if you're not reaching your goals as far as shooting goes, in terms of being able to hit what you aim at, then you've got a real problem. I mean, because it's gonna, it's gonna disappoint you when you go to the range and you're shooting. And let's face it, we kind of see what other people are doing a little bit, and and we we shoot with our handgun, and we're uh, not doing all that well on the targets. You know, it's uh, you keep on practicing and practicing, and things just don't seem to get any better. Now it depends a lot on what kind of handgun shooting you're doing too and um, a lot of most people nowadays they, they're shooting semi-automatics and they're doing kind of rapid fire at large targets not very far away like 15 feet away and uh, a lot of people are under the impression that you know good is good enough. Uh, it's, uh, you, know, you just got to be able to hit a human being at a certain distance that's all you got to do right that's what handguns are for but really uh, that's not what handguns are all for. Um, you can use handguns for self-defense in, in the bush. There are, are legitimate uses for that. Uh, and uh, the skills that you're working on when you're shooting a handgun, it would be nice if those things are transferring over and improving your ability as a rifle shooter too. So there's another way of looking at the sport of handgun shooting and that's uh, in terms of accuracy, a little bit more along the lines of bullseye shooters. You see those guys at the range once in a while, and they're standing up there with their one hand, and boom, taking their slow shots. These guys are really good shots, and they have a lot of stuff that they can teach uh, the rest of us, because a handgun can be very, very accurate. It's, uh, it's not all just bang, bang, bang with the semi-autos. It's, uh, they, but they're, there is a, a, a difference in technique, and I'm not restricting myself to just the bullseye shooters where they're, where they're doing the one hand shot. I, uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure why that's such a big deal that they have to do one hand shooting. Uh, but uh, in my background, when I trained for handguns, I started with IMSA and metallic silhouette, but now also uh, qualifying for. Um, the uh, use of handguns uh, for protection against wildlife. You know, you want to have a handgun where you're shooting double, uh, double-handed. And uh, but in spite of that difference in terms of one-handed versus two-handed, there is a lot of crossover between what a precision shooter does, a bullseye shooter does, and what someone does in terms of defending, preparing to defend themselves and in the bush for animal attack. Now, you have it so you have a bit of that precision because animals, uh, when they st launch an attack, they may be further away than 15 feet. Uh, if they're 15 feet away, uh, it's already too late, very likely to get that handgun out and drawn. So, uh, but then on the other hand, you also have to have a little bit of the uh, that fast combat style shooting too that, the, that you see so many and gun shooters uh, practicing at the range. So we have this, um, we have these two needs really, but paramount in my mind is the ability to shoot accurately, shoot with precision. And that's not really covered very much when it comes to uh, what I see out there and I'd like to deal with that in this video because there are some things about precision shooting that really baffle shooters, at least from what I've seen. And uh, the 
the, the thing that's frustrating about it is that you're aiming your gun and you're taking your shots. You know when, when the, where the sights were, more or less, when that shot went off. Uh, but when you look at the target, you're, the, the shot is over here. Or it's over there. <laughs> it's over there. And, you, you, and you, you, it makes it even impossible to set the sights of your gun because really your, your shots are just kind of, they go randomly all over the paper and you don't know what you're doing wrong. It's, uh, the whole thing can get kind of frustrating. So in this video, what I want to do is I'm going to uh, display a few samples of shooting. And I'm going to begin off with showing what typically happens for a new shooter. And I hope that if you, when you watch this little sequence, if this kind of clicks with you and say, yeah, that's kind of what's happened to me, yeah, then continue watching this video. And we're going to work this thing out because there are techniques that you can employ that are going to improve your accuracy shooting a handgun dramatically. So you'll be like those bullseye shooters. But yet, you'll also be able to take those skills and continue on into uh, rapid fire uh, for defense also and, uh, and end up being a far better shooter than you would otherwise. So let's begin on this and let's first of all see what uh, kind of a problem we're addressing. Let's begin by illustrating the dilemma that faces many new shooters. This little sequence is going to demonstrate what is actually happening to new shooters. I see this happen all the time and it's very inexplicable. You can see that as far as the shooter is concerned, their sights may be moving around a little bit, but uh, you know, there's a shot way down there on the lower left and you know I didn't have the sights over there and I'll try again and well they're getting kind of close this is what happens with new shooters but look at these bullet holes they're all over the place there's some are high some are low left right and there goes one way off to the top right and how the heck did that even happen this is what this video is going to look into because there are things happening that you don't realize when you're shooting. So let's take a closer look. Well, okay, now we've seen that little sequence and uh, does that sort of remind you of anything that uh, happens to you when you're shooting? Uh, your shots, uh, I see this a lot with people, their shots are just all over the place, sometimes almost off the paper or right off the paper completely and not at very far distances and you know very well that your hand is not wavering to that extent like what's what's wrong what's with these handguns you know are they just not uh, inherently not accurate is it something wrong with your barrel or you know what's going on here well the the thing that's really going on is that you're you're for the most part what's going on is you are letting the hammer fall too abruptly, or I should say pulling the trigger too abruptly, and you're causing a misalignment of your sights on the target. Not the, and it's so quick that you can't even notice it, but if you had a laser on the end of your barrel at that target and played the whole thing in slow motion as you were shooting, at the time that you have that hammer go down, and that previous sequence that we were looking at, at the time that that hammer went down, just briefly, you see the dip of the gun there, let's go, just like that, or it could be like that, just a, I'm actually exaggerating a lot, but it's like a thousandth of an inch out will make a huge amount of difference at the target, but it happens very quick because when that hammer falls, it kind of goes back to where your sights kind of go back to where they were. You, it's too fast for you to even see. But there is nothing wrong with the gun. Like you saw that previous sequence, all, some of these bullet holes all over the place. And uh, you saw the, the, you heard the shot go off. And uh, 
even though it's a simulation, you know, the shot goes off and then the bullet is over there. Well, the reason that the bullet went over there is because when you pull the hammer, very briefly, the, the sights moved. You know, it could be the gun going like this, it could be lifting the muzzle or something like that. And that's because of the way that you're pulling your trigger. You're picking a time for that shot to go off. And you, you know, you can't hold the, the sights perfectly steady on the target, so you're kind of thinking, well, you know, okay, now's the time. And then you pull the trigger. Because your sights just happen to be briefly aligned on the bullseye. And that's exactly what you should not do. It sounds very counterintuitive to say this, but this is exactly what you shouldn't do, especially with a handgun. When you wait for the time when the sights are just aligned right and then pick a time to pull a trigger, what's going to happen is you're going to have a rough trigger pull. And even though you think you had your sights right on it when you pull the trigger, actually when the bullet left the barrel, that barrel was not lined up on where, where it should be. And that's why your shot went all over the place and uh, quite often it's going to be low and to the left if you're yanking the trigger but it could be all all kinds of places the other thing that it's going to also do is uh, you know, i'm kind of a good a good example of this i guess because i learned how to shoot with the 44 magnum that's pretty well all i've ever shot and uh, so that was a real uphill battle learning to shoot as a novice uh, back in 1978 starting off with a a Model 29 with a four-inch barrel. It's, uh, I, I, so I've been through all this stuff, and I've had to work out what were the reasons for me missing the target. And I can tell you now that I can shoot very accurately, and it doesn't matter if it's a 44 Magnum or, or a 22. Uh, you use the right techniques. You use a lot of ball and dummy practice, making sure you're always checking yourself to make sure a flinch isn't developing, especially with these. These heavy recoiling guns, it's just human nature that you're going to kind of have a, tend to have a reaction and brace yourself for, for the noise and, and the motion that's about to come. So what, the way to battle that, especially with the heavy recoiling guns, is you cannot pick a time for that trigger to go off. It has to be just increasing the pressure steadily Deadly. And when it goes off, when that pressure finally gets high enough for it to um, break the sear, then that's when it goes off. It's not something you can predict exactly what time. Now, if you start to shoot a little bit more rapidly, you might think, well, now you have to just pull it. But no, once you get practiced in the proper trigger technique of increasing pressure, even when you're doing it in a hurry, you're still pulling it and you're not jerking the gun. You make a finer shot if you have more time to pull it, but even when you're shooting fast, you should be able to just increase, mount the pressure on the trigger so that when the hammer falls, the sights do not move. So that last video, the, the first video that we looked at, that was a demonstration of that. If you're wondering why your shots are going all over the place, yes, there are other things that can affect that. but in my opinion, by far the biggest problem is jerking that trigger. Too rough of a trigger pull, probably picking the time that, you're, you, that you want the shot to go off because oh, now my sights are on, and compounding that, especially when you get to the heavy recalling handguns, you're going to get flinching built in because you know exactly the time that that shot is going to go off, and that and gives you the, uh, your brain the opportunity to say, okay, well, you might even close your eyes as the shot goes off or whatever you do, increasing the grip on the gun or, or, or something like that. There's a bit of a reaction and anticipation of that shot which should not ever occur. That's why, especially with the heavy recoil in handguns, you've got to do always ball and dummy practice. Maybe after 30, 40 years of doing it, you can start to uh, do less ball and dummy, but it's really beneficial all the way through your shooting practice for years and years and years. 
So uh, let's, uh, let's continue on with this. And I want to drive home the point of using that, that steady increase of trigger pull uh, pressure to, to improve your shooting and kind of see how that kind of works in with increasing your accuracy. And we're going to do this in three stages, three levels of shooters. And the first level of shooter that I want to look at is I want to look at somebody who's starting off, really a rank amateur. Uh, some of these simulations may be a bit exaggerated, but not all that much. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is a rank amateur that's been trained in the proper way to shoot a handgun. Now, they're not going to get super, super good scores, but they're going to get pretty good scores because they're following the right technique. So let's just take a look at this next. Let's begin by looking at this representation of a handgun being fired at a bullseye by a fairly new shooter. And you can see here that first shot went off to the low and to the right, but that's okay because you can see that the, the steadiness of the shooter's hand is waving around in a fairly large region and there is no way that you can hold your hand absolutely steady while you're increasing pressure on the trigger and get a smooth, clean trigger break. So what the shooter is doing is correct. They are just increasing pressure on the trigger, increasing, 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 and where we got a little bit lucky, got, just happened to get it right in the bullseye. But really the shooter is not picking a time like uh, say waiting for the sights to just come right in the right spot like right now and then pull a the trigger. That is not the way to do it because you're going to get a rough trigger pull and it's very bad for your accuracy. What you have to do is you have to just struggle to keep your sights aligned, increasing pressure on your trigger, mounting up until it goes off. And when it goes off, it's going to go off just somewhere within that region of movement. So when it comes to getting precision in your shooting, what you're really trying to do is reduce that area of movement, of wavering, while you're increasing pressure on the trigger and keeping the sights aligned. So your focus is on the front sight, and just keep on pulling on the trigger. Okay, so what you saw there was uh, a good demonstration of someone who's able to um, apply a proper uh, technique to the trigger. Uh, they're not able to hold that gun very steadily. But, you know, when you watch that simulation that we were just looking at, that gun is wavering quite a bit. So this is uh, not a very steady hold. But, you know, actually it's, uh, it's surprising how good, how uh, close to the bullseye the shots were in spite of that. And you might be under the impression that this is sort of the reason why I'm showing that simulation is I think people uh, they they try shooting the way that I first described where you kind of oh okay you, as soon as the sights get on the bullseye they pull the trigger and uh, they're not doing very well that way you know shots going all over and they're thinking it's just a matter of, of working on that so if that's not working very well how and is it possible that if you just kind of increase pressure on the trigger while the sights are moving around and the, and the gun goes off when the sights are not really on the bullseye, either it's a little to the left or lower, something like that, how can that possibly be better? That's just going to be worse because now you're letting the shot off when the sights aren't even on the target, right? But it actually is uh, much better doing it that way because at least your shots are going to go where your sights are. And it's, it may not be right exactly on the bullseye, but it's going to be pretty darn close. And that's a whole lot better than that first simulation that we were looking at, isn't it? So let's, uh, let's just uh, see what, how this works out. You know, you can see this, the, the size of the uh, uh, bullet spread on this past simulation. Let's say a, a shooter's practicing a bit more and they're maintaining that good technique of trigger control. Uh, probably doing a lot of ball and dummy practice, which I'm not really showing in this simulation. Uh, but they're doing, uh, they, they're practicing in such a way that they don't flinch, there's no anticipation, and every time that trigger is released, it's just really smooth, the gun doesn't move. So let's take a look at this next. Next, we're going to see 
what happens when a shooter puts in more practice at the range and they have shot their handgun more often they're a little less jumpy and nervous they learn how to relax and you can see that area of wavering of the gun is smaller than it was in the previous video so the gun is still moving and it's always going to be moving but it's not moving in as big a region anymore as it was in the past so the shooter is doing the same thing he did in the last video just increasing pressure on the trigger while trying to keep that gun on target as close as possible but he's not picking a time he's just mounting the pressure when, he, when the gun actually goes off it'll be a surprise to him or her if you start to pick a time to put, have the shot go off, what's going to happen is your trigger pull is going to be rough. And especially if you're shooting uh, a heavy handgun like a 44 Magnum, you're going to develop a flinch. In fact, what's going to happen is you're going to start struggling with yourself a little bit because you have difficulty getting that shot off, uh, waiting for your sights to line up with the bottom of that dot and then then they start to stray off and you let pressure off on the trigger and then you start to come closer to the target and you get increasing pressure and after a while you just can't get the shot off and your arm gets tired and you just stop. So that was uh, quite a bit better than the, the previous sequence wasn't it? So the only difference really is that the shooter is is a little bit calmer, a little steadier and they're keeping the sights from wavering less far away from the bullseye. It's always going to be moving a little bit, but there is a real um, a, a matter of eye-hand-eye coordinate, -eye coordination involved in holding a gun steady out like that and increasing pressure on the trigger at the same time as your brain is trying to keep the sights on your gun aligned, both the rear and, and the front line together with the top the front sight even with the back sight and dead in the center so there's a little sliver of light on either side of that front sight so you're looking at that and you're trying to keep this, this front sight on the proper part of the target that uh, is going to be your anchor point to shoot at and at the same time as doing that you're, you're also disrupting the balance of the gun by, by uh, putting pressure on that trigger, right? So you know, when you pull the pressure on the trigger, it's tending, you know, you're using the proper trigger technique, you pull it straight back, but it's still disrupting that gun. And it's uh, gonna, so the two things are happening at the same time. So I wanna just stress that, that, that there's a lot of things going on at the same time. So you will need practice to get better at this. This is something you'll get better at. As long as you don't start bringing in a bunch of bad habits like we started off with at the beginning. Another aspect I want you to keep in mind when it comes to precision shooting is the, the way that you look at the sights on your, on your gun. Uh, in the simulations that we've been looking at, notice, uh, and you can turn back to them again, we'll show another one coming up. Uh, Notice how the, the target, the bullseye, is a little bit blurry. I've done that on purpose uh, when constructing these simulations because that is how it should be. Now, a lot of people might think, well, the thing I have to focus my eyes on is that target. But in reality, you can't focus on everything all at once. You have to pick something. And the thing that you have to pick, and what's shown demonstrated with those simulations, you have to pick that front sight. Now, by picking the front sight, it's not that much of a difference a distance from your rear sight, so you can actually keep both in pretty uh, sharp focus with your eye. But the uh, the main thing is that front sight, and you're able to see the rear sight well enough so that you can see if the front sight is aligned within it. But the target itself should be blurry because you're not focusing your attention on that target you've got to be focusing your attention on your front sight so hopefully uh, that helps some of you out too uh, I think sometimes people are 
spend a little bit too much uh, focus on the target and that is resulting in not very good sight alignment. Sight alignment is very important for precision shooting, especially when you get out to longer distances. And it's uh, aided quite a bit by a long sight radius, like this gun here, it's a 10 and 5 8 inch barrel, so I'm kind of cheating, right? <laughs> but you can still get very good accuracy with shorter sight radiuses. So keep your, uh, keep your focus on that front sight. Don't worry about that target being a little bit blurry. That's uh, not a problem. You can only focus on one thing at a time. There's one other aspect of this that I don't want to forget to include when we're looking at these uh, simulations of sh taking shots. Uh, I mentioned it briefly that uh, the, the conundrum you can enter into when you're trying to pick a, sh a time for your shot to go off. It's something we started off this video with where, you know, as your sights start to wander right across the target, shooters will new shooters will tend to uh, pull the trigger before that time passes and get that shot off. And uh, I explained in some detail why that doesn't work because of the roughness of the trigger pull, but I shouldn't uh, neglect to also mention that there is another aspect, uh, another downfall to that technique. And I think that those of you who have been shooting for some time will probably identify with this. And that is that you begin to get I don't know what the right word is, it's kind of like a mental lock, uh, a feedback loop. I guess a feedback loop would be a way to, to describe this. That you have your sights, they're, they're going on the target, and you're trying to increase, you're, you're seeing that, okay, the sights are on the target, and you, and you start to make your squeeze. So you're not really doing a jerk, but you're starting to do a squeeze, well, because you want the shot to go off right away like if not instantly you know very very soon from now because your sights are just coming onto the target but then your sights continue to move because it's really unpredictable motion when you're holding a gun it can waver this way and that eh? so so then just as you're getting to where you're gonna you want to get that shot off and then the sights move off oh shoot okay so then you kind of let off a little bit of pressure on the trigger and because your sights have now wandered off the target and then you're kind of starting over from scratch again and you're, and you're waiting to try to get your, your sights back on the bullseye and it's really stressful, you know, oh, here this, you're starting to get back onto the bullseye and then you're increasing pressure but now your arms are getting tired, you've been holding the gun for quite a while and, and you start to apply pressure but then, oh, then you let it off because you're not really certain of what you're doing, you're thinking too much, you're, okay, let's go, oh, let's not go, let's go, let's not go, and this, you're trying to keep the sights on the target, and you get in this feedback, where you, it almost feels like you can't get the shot off, and you're standing there for so long trying to aim that gun, that finally your arms get tired, and either you just kind of pull off a shot and say, well, it's, it's now or never, you know, let's get that shot off, or you just don't take the shot and you have to lower the gun. And it's a very frustrating feeling. I know I felt that, and I bet a lot of you have too. If you're in that kind of a feeling, if you ever get that type of feeling when you're shooting, that's a very good indication that you're using the wrong technique. Instead of doing that, instead of getting yourself caught in that feedback loop, just commit yourself to a trigger pull. And I don't care if that sight is exactly right on the bullseye when the shot goes off. Just once your, your sights are on the target, close enough, you start to increase that trigger pull and that's, it, this gun is just going to go off, okay? Once you start, you're going to go. You don't know exactly when the gun's going to go off, but you're committed to the trigger pull and that's just all there's to it. And then there's one less thing to think about. All you're doing from now on is you're increasing the pressure on the trigger while you're trying to keep the sights lined up with the target as you do it, okay? So hopefully you, you take that to heart. I think that's very good advice and uh, perhaps some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you do, let me know in the comments, but by all means. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's move on to the last 
simulation. This one here, we're going to just finish it off with showing what you can do when you uh, when you're able to hold the gun quite steady and control your trigger. Now, what we're going to see in this video that's coming up is a very small region of movement of the of the gun. Now, every shot that goes off you know, that you'll see in the simulation won't be exactly where the the the, you would want the shot to go off, but it's very close. Uh, you know, like when you hear the, the shot of the gun, the, the bullet will be more or less hitting the target where the sights indicate they should, but it might be a little to the left or right too. And that's, I, that's because I didn't want to make this simulation too perfect, because trigger control is very important, but it's not the entire story, okay? So there are still things you can work on and refine. But uh, let's just move on to this last simulation and let's see what, what's possible. With the sights still moving, but you're not picking a time to shoot, and what kind of really good results you can get when you use the proper technique. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what happens when a shooter develops a high degree of skill. You can see again, and this is similar to the previous videos, the gun is moving around, but it's not moving around in a very wide region. But it is going to still be moving around. So what you see here is the, the shooter is steadily increasing pressure on the trigger, just like before. But unlike before, the sights are not off the target for a very great distance. Now, when you get to this stage, you're going to start getting more and more satisfied with your shooting. And this may be where you start to attend more to the other principles in shooting, like having consistent grip and things like that, adjusting your stance and your breathing, controlling that. But the hardest thing really is to get that hammer to fall in such a way when the trigger is pulled so that the sights do not move even an iota. So you could be balancing a quarter on the front sight when you're dry fire practicing and when that hammer falls down, that quarter shouldn't fall off the front sight. That's how smooth it has to be. Because if your trigger pull is a little bit rough, you may not notice it because the gun is going off. And actually this video doesn't show the recoil, but uh, when you shoot with a rough trigger pull, the sights will momentarily move out of alignment and that's going to be why your shots are going to be in a very unexpected place. So you have to concentrate on keeping a steady trigger pull while you try to keep that region of movement to an absolute minimum. That's how you do precision shooting. And as you can see, it is possible to get a great deal of accuracy this way, even though you're not picking the time to pull the trigger. Now when the gun goes off, you want to be pretty sure that your sights don't move. So something that will help a lot in that is the implementation of dry fire practice. You notice in the course of this video, I'm picking this gun. I've had this gun for 30 years, right? And I do this all the time. Dry fire practice will not hurt your gun. Don't believe the uh, people that say it does. It just terribly over exaggerated. Dry fire your gun lots. It's uh, it's one of the best ways of checking your technique. Because you know, when you take that gun and it doesn't have a live round in it, and you pull a trigger, you can see if that sight front sight moved. It's it's very useful to you. It's the same thing that happens when you're doing ball and dummy practice, when you're doing real practice at the range. Having a, have a few empty cylinders in there, when the hammer lands on an empty cylinder, you'll be able to see right there if the sight's moved. And if you're starting to develop a bit of a flinch or anticipation. So by all means, I really want to stress that to do ball and dummy practice. It's one of the biggest advantages of using a revolver, really, when it comes down to it. I love revolvers, by the way. So, let's, uh, let's 
kind of consider that uh, for your shooting. Maybe uh, implement some of these techniques. Uh, see how will they how they work for you. And let me know if uh, if uh, if this helps you in in resolving some of your shooting problems. Now, when you get when you practice like this, don't think that it's going to be only for slow fire practice. Uh, when you go into rapid fire, and I know some of the the testing that we have to do here in Canada for authorization to carry does require rapid fire. Uh, this this uh, kind of practice for precision is great because when you when you're good with your trigger control, you can then move on to using a holster and drawing and firing off six shots in rapid succession, uh, using working on proper stance and and breathing techniques and things like that. And you can you 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 can fly through a test like that because the one thing you're able to do already is you're able to shoot accurately, and that's something that people really, handgun shooters as a rule, are not very good at. In fact, a lot of handgun shooters consider a handgun to be only useful up to 15 feet or so. As for somebody standing like almost right in front of you, you can defend yourself, but that is not the truth. You can use a handgun, you can be deadly at with that thing, up to quite long range. Ask anyone who's been in the old uh, handgun metallic silhouette shooting sports uh, where uh, our targets were out at 200 yards. So uh, something to consider. Uh, if you like this video, I hope you subscribe to it. Click the subscribe button. Uh, there's also a bell uh, symbol on the on the page. Uh, click that, and it'll give you notifications for when the next videos are out. Uh, I really appreciate your support and depend on it in order to continue this work. And uh, I hope to can come up with uh, the type of material that's most helpful to you and covers everything that we're all interested in. So from the Way to Native Chronicles, thank you, God bless, and be safe out there.